LLVM backend code generation, one of the most critical yet underappreciated aspects of compiler design. This is where abstract LLVM IR transforms into real machine code that your CPU can actually execute. If you're serious about systems programming, this is knowledge you must have in your toolbox. Code generation is the process of converting LLVM intermediate representation, or IR, into target-specific assembly code. Think of LLVM IR as a universal language that needs to be translated into platform-specific machine instructions. This step is crucial because it allows LLVM to be cross-platform. Write your code once, and the backend does the heavy lifting to target x86, ARM, or RISC-V. The backend's job is to bridge the gap between high-level representation, or IR, and low-level hardware-specific instructions. One pipeline, multiple targets. The process of code generation has three key stages each one with specific goals and technical challenges. First up is instruction selection. The backend selects instructions from the target CPU's instruction set. For x86, it might be move, add, and sub. For ARM, it might select LDR or load register, and STR or store register. LLVM has a rich selection DAG system to determine which instruction is optimal for the target architecture. Let's look at this LLVM IR statement. Percent %1 equals add I32, percent %A, percent %B. Percent one is a variable that stores the result of the operation. In LLVM IR, values are assigned to named registers like percent one, percent two, etc. The add indicates that it's an addition operation. I32 specifies the data types of the operands, in this case a 32-bit integer. And percent A, percent B are the two operands, both 32-bit integers being added together. We see the equivalent of this statement in x86, where we have add, eax, ebx as well as the equivalent in ARM, where we have add, R0, R1, R2 assembly instructions. For x86, we're adding the value in EBX to EAX and storing the result back in EAX. And for ARM, we're adding the results in R1 and R2 and storing the result in R0. The key difference is that the x86 is a destructive update because the destination is also a source. But for ARM, we have a non-destructive update, where the destination is separate from the sources. And that's because we're storing the results back in R0, which is a general purpose register. It's one of 16 registers in ARM architecture from R0 to R15. However, translating LLVM IR to backend architectures is not always straightforward. Some instructions might have to be broken into multiple simpler instructions, and the selection algorithm must consider factors like instruction latency and pipeline hazards. The next stage is register allocation. LLVM IR uses an infinite number of virtual registers, but real CPUs don't have infinite registers. This stage maps virtual registers to physical hardware registers. It's a classic graph coloring problem. How do we fit n variables into m registers without spilling them into memory? If there aren't enough registers available, we spill some variables into memory, which comes with a performance cost. This is where LLVM's register allocation heuristics come in. Simple allocators use greedy algorithms, but more advanced ones use graph coloring or linear scan techniques. The final stage is assembly emission. Here, LLVM generates human-readable assembly files or directly produces machine code. This step finalizes the instructions and binary encodings for each instruction, essentially the last mile of code generation. Here we can see the LLVM IR turning into x86 assembly, and then the corresponding machine code or hex bytes. Let's break this down. We start with a simple C code example, where we add two integers a and b. And here is the LLVM IR corresponding to this C code. This line declares a function add that takes two 32-bit integers and returns an i32. The entry block contains the computation for the function, which is adding the values percent %A and percent %B and storing the result in percent %0, and this final line returns the result of the addition. Next, the LLVM IR is compiled to x86 assembly code. This happens when you use LLVM tools like LLC to generate assembly code from LLVM IR. Add marks the beginning of the function. To understand the next two lines, we have to understand the x86-64 calling convention. When you write a C function like add, the arguments A and B are placed in RDI and RSI, respectively. And in x86-64, which is 64-bit architecture, registers like RDI and RSI are 64 bits wide, meaning they can hold large values up to 64 bits. However, since we're dealing with smaller values like 32-bit integers, the lower 32 bits of the 64-bit registers are used to hold the actual values. These lower 32 bits of RDI and RSI are referred to as EDI and ESI, respectively. Now let's understand this line. Move is the instruction to move a 32-bit value from one register to another. EDI holds the first argument A, and EAX is the register that will store the result of the function. 
In the x86-64 architecture, the return value of a function is usually stored in EAX. Therefore, to start computing the result, we first move the value of A, stored in EDI, into EAX. So, this instruction is copying the value of the first argument into the return value register, EAX. This next line uses add, which is the instruction to add two 32-bit values. ESI holds the second argument B, and EAX holds the result so far, which is just A from the previous step. The add instruction adds the value in ESI, which is the second argument B, to EAX, which currently holds A. So this instruction is just adding the second argument B to the value already in EAX, which is A. And ret just returns the result in the EAX register. Now the x86 assembly code is translated into machine code, which is a series of hexadecimal bytes. Using an assembler like AS, which is the GNU assembler, or a tool like object dump, we can generate the following machine code. And these hex bytes can be directly executed by the CPU. Now we've covered all the essentials, but if you're looking to go deeper, there's more to explore. Topics like peephole optimization, loop unrolling, and vectorization all happen at the backend stage. LLVM also supports just-in-time compilation where machine code is generated on the fly for maximum performance. Let me give you a brief example of a peephole optimization. For example, a sequence of load, add, and store operations might be combined into a single add memory instruction. And these optimizations can help make your code run faster on modern CPUs. Let's recap. LLVM code generation takes LLVM IR and produces platform-specific assembly. It does this in three stages. Instruction selection, which selects instructions from the target CPU's instruction set. Register allocation, or mapping virtual registers to physical CPU registers. And assembly emission, or writing assembly or machine code. Every CPU architecture requires a unique approach, and LLVM makes it possible to target them all from a single IR. If you learned something new today, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to go deeper into instruction selection, register allocation, or LLVM JIT, let me know in the comments below. I try my best to read all the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding!